Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel, where I like to make audio narrations of stories from across the internet. In this series, we will be focusing on the web novel, There is no Epic Lucia, Only Puns, from the website Royal Road, and in this video we will be doing chapters 16 to 18. I hope that you enjoy. There is no Epic Lucia, Only Puns, Chapter 16, Duck for Traps. The duck had found her call room. Dalta watched as the bird eyed her call. There was a lot of doubt about this duck that Dalta was a little worried. For one, it had almost zero reaction to Fran and Bacon, other than more angry quacking. So now Dalta had no clue what the duck was going to do. Some ancient duck ritual to drain her of mana? Dalta hoped not. She didn't need this duck to turn out to be some evil demon. The duck quacked once. Dalta blinked at the menu. Summon duck number 3981 would like to form a contract. A max of three contracts can be formed until a new level is formed. Current contracts two out of three. Delta eyed the yes button and, and the waiting duck. Quiz and Rudy hadn't spoken about the contract of monsters or what was okay to accept. But Quiz had summoned the duck himself. How could it be? Out of proud, the contracted monsters seemed like godsends, but there didn't seem to be any downsides to them as far as Delta could puzzle out. Except for the expensive resurrection cost, of course. Menu? What bad things could a contract of monsters bring? Delta asked aloud and the menu hummed into existence. Contract of monsters by forming a contract with the dungeon, the monster gains power from the contract that the dungeon cannot control. Contracted monsters also can leave the dungeon and take a tiny portion of power with them. Contracted monsters need a huge amount of DP to respawn and do not have to follow orders. The dungeon core cannot force a monster to break a contract while it is alive. Costs a lot, doesn't need to listen to her, and Delta can't force it to leave until it gets beaten by adventurers. Yeah, Delta could see that could be a problem if she invited the wrong thing into a dungeon. Ah, sure. Welcome to the dungeon, Delta hit the button that she saw and the duck glowed and changed. Delta watched as the brownish feathers turned to a patch of black and shook itself once. Quack! The duck seemed happier. Delta watched as it waddled off and the menu dinged again. Dark Drake, a simple duck that has simple needs. Due to ambient magic power left of its feathers, this duck can now curse people to have a bad time if they annoy it. That raised a question of its own. What curse? What exactly made up a bad time? Delta didn't know and hoped no one would be stupid enough to try. Still, she now had a duck and she knew exactly where it was heading. Not outside, sadly, Delta had a feeling this duck marched to the beat of its own drum. The pond seemed to fit the dark drake just fine and Delta quickly hollowed out a little edge near the back of the pond so that the duck could nest there or something. She wanted to improve the pond even more now that Delta inhaled and reminded herself that she had an empty room before the goblin camp. Delta just couldn't have been in empty space doing nothing. Floating back, she eyed the space and remembered what Quiss had said offhand. If they lived beyond that door, it's a bit weird that they don't guard this one. That was true and Delta felt giddy as she lowered the floor, but only about half of the room and forming a slope to felt off. So she flattened the side where the people would enter, and Delta looked up at the entrance that was somewhere around eight feet off the ground. Can I lower the entrance? She asked and her handy menu responded. Lowering dungeon beyond this point will entrance will require 15 mana. Do you wish to lower the dungeon? Entrance will not change location. Delta hesitated and then agreed. She stumbled as the dungeon shook, her mental map not changing, so much as her awareness felt like it had gained a new depth as her half of her dungeon lowered itself down and put everything beyond the room on a higher elevation. The tunnel connection sank down until it was now even with the ground on the lowest part of the room. Step 1. Done. Dalton nodded and turned to the top of the hill where the exit awaited the people who entered. Menu give me the mana cost for a wooden goblin watchtowers. Delta requested and she mentally winced as its cost. Wobbly wooden children's tower. A tower that is more suited for children playing than any real defense. The slightly sharpened stakes at the top might hurt a little. Need proper research and spending to have a real goblin defenses. 10 mana. 
H Tower did reach up to 7 feet, which might explain the cost, and when adding the to the hill elevation, they were pretty good towers for her gobs. It wasn't complicated, and Delta could replace them in a pinch. Delta knew that it wouldn't take long for the people who just rush up the hill to do battle there, so she also needed a method to slow down the advancing party. Making sure her new friend Waddles, the Dark Drake, was fine, she hit yes on the menu to confirm the name was fine. Delta opened up her menu and considered her options. There was something that she could purchase to help the room be somewhat challenging. Sticky floor panel, a square panel that is about 3 by 3 feet. The magic in this trap makes those who step on it stick to the surface as if it was honey. Delta hummed and then purchased it. More traps for the dungeon, more annoyance for the adventurers. The actual mana cost was only per trap, which was good because Delta was running a bit low on 18 mana. Her menu buzzed and Delta eyed the trap purchase menu with a surprise as the new trap appeared. Slide trap unlocked. Due to having stick, trap, and ink. Slide trap, a surface becoming slick with a substance that makes it those who step on it lose their footing and if on a hill, slide down. A dungeon may find it handy if rooms had hills. 10 DP. Menu, you beautiful piece of fudge. Delta grinned at the menu, did a little jingle before fading. Delta eyed the room and saw how she would place the three sticky traps along the hill and the three slide traps above them. Not too close. Maybe a pitfall at the bottom if she managed to avoid the sticky trap. Yes, Delta could see how merely climbing the hill would be a problem for people and adding Hob and Gob with a new stone ammunition. Delta felt evil with a non-lethal room. Well, unless the rock took someone in the eye, then it would be somewhat dangerous, but Delta could only do so much with her limitations. It wasn't her fault if someone stared at a goblin throwing rocks and didn't bother to wear a helmet. There was no guilt at all. Since she had no guilt about something that may happen, Delta quickly asked the menu about eye patches as rewards for beating the room or something similar. Add a second floor to the dungeon, 200 DP. This had been a thing that had tried not to look at too hard and when she had finished the boss room. It was an option that she wasn't willing to consider until her first floor had some beef to it. Even then, the idea hadn't been solid until Rudy and Chris's visit. What would she do with the second floor? Delta at the time could only imagine more death and blood, but now, thinking of all the space where she could challenge people, invite people to harvest nice materials, or just relax in some safe room as they fished, napped, bet on the chicken races, or something. The problem was that Delta came more competent at her menu ability the more things that she found that she wanted to mess around with on the first floor that required DP. Delta felt a familiar annoyance at the time and resource management. Delta loved it, but she was impatient. Back in the good old days, she would cheat in money just so that she could build. Then, when trophies became a thing and achievements, that dictated that she needed to play fair. Delta knuckled down and got to work. Another floor, even with the bare bones, offered more space for people to explore. More things for people to spend time on. Sure, that didn't get DP from people just wandering about, but if they dropped items, or if they made tributes on top of her goblins collecting things, then she would have ample time to collect things and build up her DP. What she needed now was, well, the one thing that she was dreading, adventurers. Delta could be the innocent, pure dungeon that all she wanted, but without some of the traffic, Delta was stuck eating mushrooms and rocks. Until she got more mana, she decided not to buy the traps for her fort room. Instead, Delta wanted to get something done and cement her opinion on this whole dungeon is a murder house thing. So she moved her entrance and stared at the two walls that only had torches flickering on them. Menu, I want to make a signpost and put it on the wall. Delta requested and the menu appeared. Shoddy signpost added to the menu, two mana for ten words. Delta felt like there was a bargain to purchase two, one for each one. Would you like to add text to the signpost? Delta smiled and hit yes. She only needed ten or so. For the time to come, all those who had entered the dungeon entrance of the Mushies and Pacifism would encounter these two signs. The quality of material would change over time, but the words mostly remained the same. The ones left the board read as followed. Those who enter, please say forfeit to leave the dungeon alive. 
This was perhaps the most controversial thing a dungeon had ever allowed. A death was a gift to the dungeon. For one to allow such a sweet power to slip away, their soul must truly be a pure or hiding a dark and dangerous agenda. People would discuss this matter for years. The second board was shorter than below and it had a simple box. Please leave donations so that I may grow and become helpful. This was the dungeon's oster to sparing life. To enter this dungeon, one may part with the spluff in one's pockets and the holy objects of destiny. All was welcome. Those who stole from this box would be remembered, often hunted down by the unofficial guardian. Maybe the most famous thing about the signboards was despite how often one scoffed at them, the earnest tone never faded. But first, before any of that became important, there were spiders. There was lots of spiders. End of chapter. There is no epic lucia, holy puns, chapter 17, along came a spider. Waddles quacked a few times as Delta spoke aloud. He was rather a chill bird once he got left alone to swim and not say being summoned into a pit of mud by an annoyed wizard. Delta guessed that was only fair. So, I don't know, what should I do next? I mean, I definitely need to aim for a second floor. Delta mused and Waddles seemed to agree. Francois cleared his throat. Second floor would be good. More space to build and more protection, he nodded, and Delta agreed, trying not to blush as she had perfectly good talking partner right there. Delta stood, blowing out a sigh at her 16 manner. She could do a few things like place traps or a tower and a trap. Walking around her dungeon, she saw that the entrance hadn't budged from the spot that it had been laid before, but she saw the ground go down, and the door went. Did the second floor half go up or did it first floor half go down? Her menu said it did, she definitely moved the first part down. Delta just let it go and chalked it up to a funky dungeon space again. Hob and Gob came running into the entrance and Delta was a little sad that they didn't stop to see her signs. It came clear why as a spider about the size of a donkey came rushing in after them. Holy fur! Delta cut herself off as the goblins began to grow again. Power returning to them. Hob waved his sword, dropping his bucket of goods. Delta was only barely aware of a manor hitting 29 due to the approaching nightmare with eight legs. The spider made Delta's spiders look like little puppies. The drooling large fangs of black void filled eyes, Delta didn't even know why she noticed her manor grow. Wait. Delta eyed the bucket and the fading goods. There was something in a dungeon. Why was her? Delta could still open a menu. Oh my. Gosh, Delta whispered as Hob took a swipe with his sword again and Gob took out an eye with one of his stones. HP bar? Delta waved her hands, her mind was going blank. Her friends were about to be eaten by a big evil spider, and it didn't even have a white line around its butt, which made Delta's spiders cooler. Nothing happened, so Delta gave on forcing a video game mechanics to appear for now and tried to think of what she could do. She couldn't do much besides give Hob and Gob stone weapons, and she wasn't sure how much mana she would need to upgrade them both and give them proper weapons. Run! Just run towards the camp, Delta ordered, and the gobs hesitated and then took off, the spider hissing like a coarse brush hitting a brick wall. Delta moved with them and almost froze as the spider tumbled, all eight legs over a tripwire, becoming covered in the silver web as it crashed into the far wall. She couldn't believe that worked. What happened? Delta shouted and Gob just yelled back as he turned the corner. Waiting for us, he panted. Well, that wasn't good. Delta opened her menu and the map and saw that the spider didn't spontaneously combust, drop dead, piss off waddles and drown, or have some new world allergic reaction to the mud than her first option would be. She smashed the confirm button on her purchase. The spider ignored the grotto and moved fast down the wall, the hairs on its body refusing to stick to the silver web for long. Her gobs crossed the mudroom faster than they had done in any of the previous attempts. They slowed at the sight before them. Delta nearly did too. There was a splat and a sound like a demon being born. Delta urged her goblins onwards and stared at her purchase. The spider managed to pull itself up and over the far side after a minute. It froze and Delta just nodded. Run away, she whispered, trying to mentally will the thing to get a hint, and the spider hesitated and then launched forward. 
Delta watched as a newly evolved mushy swung its arch arms and fists down and utterly crushed the front half of the spider's body. The myconid was the second evolutionary path of the mushroom spitter. It lost its acid and its ability to strike from the shadows and a lot of reaction time if caught unaware. In return, it grew short, strong legs and a rather beefy arms, and they were effective beyond Delta's expectations. Standing somewhere just short of six foot tall, the large mushroom had a round, soft-looking belly and it no longer had a mouth. Instead, the beady eyes became soft and curious as it lifted its hands and tried to shake off the green goo off with a quickly melting away. Oh, it also seemed that in return for physical power, the mushy lost its hatred for everything and became somewhat fascinated by its instead, evidenced by the way that it was poking Gob curiously. Delta was trying to take this all in, her mind supplying little things to keep her mind from the screaming. Perhaps the fact that she had been invaded by the thing did not want to talk. Maybe because it showed how powerless Delta could feel until they hit her mudroom. Or maybe it was, despite all of Delta's big talk, violence still was the end result. Maybe it was because she hadn't seen anything bigger than a bird die before her eyes. She had refused to look at a farmer's death, but she had made this choice and now she had to deal with it. All of this sounded very logical and understandable and it was very neat. Delta hiccuped and her dungeon ate the gill. Monsters aren't mans, Francois said as he exited the grove, shooing the guardian boar who was trying to nibble at his robes. Monsters contain hatred. It becomes the will of the gobs. With spider, I becomes hungry. Hatred makes monsters different from animals. Aminals fight or run. Monsters can do those too. But they think they and remember. Monsters can eat manna as well. Monster is powerful and draws them, as well as boneheads. Francois snapped and smacked both Hob and Gob with his staff. Delta just looked at the spot where the spider was. Do all monsters hate? Delta had asked as her newly named Mr. Mushy picked Francois up and put him on his cap hat. Francois' face soured. Not all, but no more monsters evolved or grow. The less hate holds sway. I not know if monsters can free themselves or just live like it. When monsters grow big enough, then the hate is a choice. Francois swatted at Mr. Mushy's attempt to pet him, and it looked odd that the mushroom couldn't see where the goblin was exactly. What about my dungeon monsters? Delta needed to know and Francois just grinned. When I was born, I feel need to protect, not hate. He said casually and steered the Mr. Mushy onwards to the grove. Delta felt relief at that, and then, unsure if she was truly wanted to know, asked Francois one more question. Can you befriend monsters? She wanted to know. Her question was delightfully cliché, and Delta felt no shame in it. Francois just shrugged. If Master wants it, she will find a way. I am confident in your power. He complimented. Delta felt a little touched at the comment and moved to keep up. Compared to all her terrible mushroom experiences so far, Misty Mushy was adorable. If all of her mushrooms could just be so cute as the myconid, then Delta would be a lot happier. Looking at him, she watched as the boar squealed and fled from the stomping odd and the cheerful mushroom man. He looked like a fun guy. Delta snorted and giggled, which made Hob and Gob look confused. Ronson was too busy trying to avoid the mushroom, then hit it in the face with the impromptu steed ran out of control. Delta turned and looked towards her entrance. This wouldn't be the last time that she would have to kill. Delta just had to accept that life wasn't going to bend to let her avoid the messy parts of being a dungeon. Hatred would drive monsters to seek her out, if Francois was right. Delta just nodded with determination. As long as she got no enjoyment for it and didn't lure them in, then Delta wouldn't cry for the monsters that died. Delta looked at the tunnel where the last of the spider faded. Tiny green splotches of blood. She clasped her hands together a little prayer in her head. Maybe now, the spider didn't feel the hatred and that was one tiny comfort Delta could take from this. Black forest spider absorbed, cost for deadly mushroom reduced by 5 dp. Common silver spinner spider upgrade cost reduced by 2 dp. Mild poison added to research 12 dp. Delta nodded. Thank you for your donations. She nodded and moved on with the purpose. First was the tripwire. With 29 mana and 58 dp, she could begin making progress in her heal room. She owed it to the spider to make the most of the points. Delta paused. 
and his spiders were making angry noises as they collected the torn webs and discarded it. Oh, sorry, Delta chuckled nervously. She directed them to throw it into the tunnel entrance and leave it there for the next person to enter to pick up. Don't worry, I'll get this dungeon in tip-top shape and make sure that you guys get improved as well. After all, Delta said as she moved through the web as she spent the point to add a few wooden supports to the center of the room to give the spiders more places to attach webbing. It gave her berry bush a nice special feeling too. We dungeon folk have to stick together. She offered and a spider shuddered and played dead. Delta crossed her arms. I think I'm hilarious, she muttered. So, this is why outgoing mail is banned for the next few days to weeks. Chris called out to the town square. Well, it was more of an oblong rectangle that had an errant triangular tumor hanging off of it. But I need to respond to my girlfriend. A whiny man complained. Chris wasn't going to say it, but he didn't need to. Rudy was here. Your girlfriend that lives in Taronda. Yes, come on, Colard. No one buys it. Rudy said, her eyes closed as she tried to snooze on her chair. She was the only other person on the little podium that had once been summoned to debate one of the greater demons into selling his legal rights to take the souls of their cattle. In return, he got a lot of cheese. Chris could appreciate the craftsmanship of the little desk before him and was way everyone seemed to be unable to ignore him as long as he looked ready to rent. Anyway, we decided to keeping the dungeon a secret from the town people was wrong, and we didn't want to clean that junk out of our houses if you die. So, the dungeon is there. Don't go into it without permission, or without letting everyone know. So, that we can all take bets. As the king's law states, you must either be over the age of 16, have a demon bound inside your soul, wield a sword that no one else can use, be mute and heralded as the hero of this timeline, have a magical birthmark tied to some prophecy, or have a parental permission to enter the dungeon. Quis reminded, Quite a few of the teenagers and younger kids grumbled at this. The two blonde kids that were mute that had been hailed as heroes in some fashion in the crown shrugged. Quis knew one wanted to be a vet, and the other was too lazy to go anywhere. Smart boys, in his opinion. What's the dungeon like? One excited girl asked, and her little pigtails bounced as she jumped on the spot. Nice, has a few spiders and goblins, so don't go wandering in. Ruli answered for him. Quis knew the kids loved announcements like these. It got out from the school. The only teacher in town who managed six different classes of students in a single day stood to the side, smiling politely. Mr. Jones was a nice man, and if Quis ever felt like he needed to die slowly and painfully by having spawn, he wouldn't mind if Mr. Jones teaching them. He baked cookies, listened to students, and never had a student fail since he took over in the last five years. It was the only hope of this community had any reaching a standard of education. Quis also knew that the man was hearty. He confiscated a black wand from the student yesterday. In a town like this, magical weapons were a dime a dozen, and outside of this town, they would all sell for a small kingdom's annual income. Thankfully, Mr. Jones dispatched the skeleton harmony that the brat had raised before history class was over and had a stern talk with his mother of the student, the black bog witch, who was now the town's glass and metal craft shop owner. The woman could make cauldrons like no one's business. How she managed to make them and clay, she kept to herself. Mr. Jones was all right in Chris's book. The fact that he was a knowledge demon from the 142nd layer of the abyss didn't make the clean shirt and nice tie any less attractive. Many women and men had often fought with their spouse about who would get a go at the parent-teaching meetings to stare at his straight teeth and lovely hair. Quiz cleared his throat, and the silence had stretched on. So, please don't die, or I'll have to do paperwork. He ended the meeting with a little gavel bang, and then ended the podium's magic, and walked away. I liked it, Rudy said as she caught up. Holding up one hand, she read off an imaginary headline. Don't die, idiots, local peacekeeper cautions, she announced. Quiz had his small smile as they both entered the local pub. Nibs nodded and poured in the usual. It was good to relax and Quiz knew that he'd better enjoy it. Delta would be cooking something up that appeared innocent, but in reality would make Quiz feel old soon enough. At least in his melody mead, he tasted good, and he burped a little and birdsong came out. He snorted as some heavy berserker metal flowed from Ruli's mouth. 
In the night that followed, neither Quiss or Delta could predict the danger that would come. This was not the hungry spiders that moved closer, but also one of the most dangerous types of creatures in the kingdom. Teenagers. End of chapter. There is no epic lucha, only puns. Chapter 18, I am Dio. Delta hummed as she added the second sticky trap to the night to the fort room. After the spider attack, she felt hesitant to send her goblins out together until she could properly equip them. Delta didn't feel like it was the end of the world. Maybe she could ask Rudy to collect trash or if Quiss had any junk that he wanted to get rid of. Working with people, the idea was absolutely wonderful. Delta hoped that both of them had many friends that they could invite to her dungeon. Rudy might. Actually, she had boasted about being the rudest woman in town. But maybe Quiss, Delta cut off the thought before it could even sprout, and instead of hoped that Quiss would keep on visiting. He was a nice and handsome, but his attitude was like a cactus with an antisocial behavioral problems. Kind of a prick, but not suited and unprepared. Still, Delta didn't give up hope. She'd take precautions, fought up during the night and wait for the relative safety of daylight before sending Hob and Gob back out to collect more. Contracted monsters were useful and somewhat odd. Waddles was gone. Delta could only guess that he'd gone through the water tunnel to... somewhere? Delta really needed to see what was down there one day, and she just needed an aquatic monster that could speak. Merfolk, were they a thing? Usually dragons and merfolk came as a package, Delta hoped. She wouldn't even mind if they were more creepy kind. Under the pond, under the pond, Delta sung as she made her way to Mr. Mushy was okay. The giant bipedal fungi was having a fun petting the grove guardian and the boar's despair. Delta sneaked away before the boar could complain. With only 19 mana and 58 DP, Delta needed to pass the time until morning came. Moving back to the spider room, she opened up the menu of the room and she hummed as she saw the message. The room is inhabited by spiders only. The room is used for the purposes of webs. This room is near the front of the menu finds it's weird that it is so peaceful. Would you like to upgrade this room to spider room? All things inside the room will become bound and cannot be moved outside of the room. Cost 10 DP. Delta wanted to cackle. She tried and sounded like she was just about having a good time. She hit yes and the room flashed and nothing truly changed. She opened the menu again. Spider Room. Upgrade total number of spiders that can be in the room, 5 DP. Restore trap after dungeon is empty, 8 DP. Make spiders more durable and less likely to die, 10 DP. Make a great amount of berries with each spider that dies, 5 DP. Delta really had to appreciate the sheer detail that her powers could go to. The ability to punish people who murdered her spiders was nice. Having the trap able to fix itself was also nice. Delta wondered if that would always have been the choice if her nature, to the point of view, made such an option coming to existence. Delta hoped so. It meant that if she could kept trying to be herself, her powers would help her. It would be nice. Not everyone was a comic book hero who could struggle with their awesome demon power every chapter. Delta kind of liked her menu. It had spunk. She purchased the trap replacement and berry punishment options, reducing her total DP to 35. The tripwire made the twang noise as she pulled it again. Delta cheered as her first homemade room became even better. I should hope that many first-timers have a great trip into my dungeon. Delta bent over and snorted hard as she tried not to laugh. Her cheeks hurt and her lungs protested, but Delta managed to avoid her spiders roll away in disgust. Delta wondered if the puns were some form of sanity-protecting coping mechanism and decided that if they were, it was the only right that she kept on enjoying them. Master? Fran called from Delta and was the boss room for an instant. Fran was kneeling and looking nervous. Bacon the pig was also bowing. Master, I heard from Francois. You do not intend for me to do my job? Fran asked with a concern and Delta just stared at him with confusion. Job? She echoed and Fran gripped his spear tightened. I must defeat invaders. I make those who seek you doubt die. He stated and Delta felt like lost and the tone became upset. Delta got on the floor and the ground with him. Fran, of course you will. I just don't want you killing those who surrender or flee. She consoled and Fran didn't meet her look. That makes man's will speak of my tactic will become known. I will be exploited. 
He responded and sounded angry. Delta could see how that would be an issue. But I don't want to kill people who simply want to explore. She added her own feelings and Fran squirmed. He looked at his metal spear. A boss must protect Kor. I must protect you. He said quietly and Delta was quiet for a few seconds. Then protect my will. I need you to let those who surrender in earnest go. Those who challenge your strength should be offered to the ability to grow and become stronger. I want them to become stronger. Fran, defeat is not a failure in this case. Pushing those cannot handle the lower floors back is your duty. Delta explained and Fran was quiet. Those that spit upon your mercy. Master, those who would abuse your greatness. He pondered and Delta hesitated for only a few seconds. Those who surrender and then attack or those who refuse to back down. I have done what I can. Treat them as scum or respectful warriors as you see fit. I cannot protect them from their own hearts or desires. Delta said, feeling the words a little odd and not really something that she would normally say. Delta frowned and tried to think of why she had said them. Nothing answered and she let it go as a slip of the tongue or maybe the dungeon part that she'd merged with speaking out. Spare honorable and unprepared. Punish liars and fools. Tran translated and Delta could only smile weakly. If you kill someone mid-battle, I'll make sure to warn people and nobody can sue us. She waved her hands, and Fran looked confused. I will stab this Sue. I will defeat you, you master, Fran promised, and Bacon snorted with determination. Her manner and DP shut up, and Delta blinked, looking around. She saw Waddles had returned, spitting some red weeds onto the shore. Yes, excellent. Defeat the Sues. First name, Mary. Uh, be right back, Delta said apologetically, and rushed off to the pond room. Her menu rang out. Bloodweed absorbed. Bloodweed? What else? What had he found? Delta appeared in the duck, closed his eyes, and he looked done for the day and nestled back into his little alcove. Delta opened the menu and her eyes bunged out, her mind going blank. Mana 67, DP 83. Delta could feel the mana flow through her. What else? What was that? She demanded, but the duck kept snoozing. In a panic, she had no idea what to do with all of this sudden excess mana. This bloodweed had given her 48 mana. This was the biggest boost that she had ever gotten, except for maybe the fire crystal. She moved quickly in the goblin camp and picked one of the two normal goblin monsters, Num or Billy. How they acquired those names was not something Delta had a clue about. Hob and Gob seemed pleased by them, however. Picking up Billy, she spent five minutes to give him an evolution. She slammed her finger down and hit the one in the middle. Goblin Archer, five mana or two DP. Billy glowed, and when the light slowly died down, he was wearing a little odd green hat and a tunic that he had rather rough-looking bow in his hands. His arrows were all different sizes, and he had a rude words carved on the shafts. The feathers looked suspiciously like chicken feathers. That still left her with eight mana over the limit, so she hit Num with the other evolution. Goblin Thug, five mana and two DP. Num became a lot bigger and more muscle-bound, and his loincloth turned into a thick fur pelt, which stretched over one shoulder like a Tarzan leotard. In his hands was a two-handed wooden club, with some creature's serrated teeth on the edges. She spent the last mana of summoning a random healthy apple, sighing with relief over not wasting any mana. Delta watched as Numb swung his club in the air and Billy picked his nose with the back end of one of his arrows in the quiver and promptly sneezed due to the feathers. Mana well spent. Delta opened a menu and looked at the item that had done this. Bloodweed, a rare underwater plant that can be applied to wounds to hasten heaving. Stronger if wound is fresh. Delta frowned as she hadn't got any upgrades from the gift from Waddles. Menu, why didn't I get something from this? Delta asked, trying not to sound ungrateful. A window opened up to her left. Ingredient is beyond anything that the dungeon has eaten before. It'll take a few digestions to gain proper rewards. Delta nodded as it faded, like some games that required repeated collections before the things became available. Unlocking super awesome weapons with only getting one of each material was a bit weak. Like collecting enough things in the Mythal Slime Spear or breeding a gold amount of the best sword. It took effort and Delta accepted that if she wanted to get good things, she needed to put in the effort. Sadly, the effort wasn't exactly up to her, but to Waddles. 
and Waddles looked ready to call it a night. But Delta could complain about how she couldn't control contractor monsters and be ungrateful for the effort Waddles had been done in for her so far. She could spend a few mana and DP points with Glee. Choices, choices. Well, Delta had never been one to duck out at fun times. Delta snorted and had to take a few seconds to collect herself before she moved off to the mudroom. Make the room into a mudroom. All elements will be bound to this room and cannot be removed, out unless destroyed 10 DP. Delta almost couldn't hold back her excitement as she hit the confirm. The room flashed and Delta opened up the menu. Mudroom, make the logs appear from the wall and knock down hesitant jumpers 10 DP. Make the mud reappear if removed 5 DP. Randomize position of logs every 3 days 10 DP. Make traps in this room freeze for whomever the core wishes 12 DP. Delta shivered at the cruelty of the menu and loved it deep down. She purchased the wall logs and trap freezing options, leaving her with 57 DP. Thinking of the second floor, Delta hesitated, and then thinking of Bloodweed, Ruli Quiss and her goblins purchased the rest. It was point wait. She was already used to that one. Delta fumed for a menu emptied out the upgrades for a second. Delta struggled for a second. Like a circle, saving points is pointless? Delta tried and then sighed. It was the same punchline and she only watched the holes appear in the walls from when the wooden logs would appear with a fading interest. Nothing could make her feel better about a repeated pun. Nothing. People entered a dungeon. Three people. Delta threw her puns away and smothered down her invisible dress. Guests have arrived and she wasn't ready. Delta hoped that they were friendly, hoped they were nice, hoped they were clever. IDO shall conquer this dungeon in one run, the young man screamed and Delta felt her soul freeze as if karma and laughed at her. The boy was a fiery red hair and ginger stubble. Why am I here? The girl to his left sighed, her pointy hat so comically large. Delta couldn't see her features very well. Her blue cloak and slightly magical wooden spoon glowed with the entrance hall. Dio, as he had said, laughed as if this was hilarious. Don't be shy, Poppy. I, Dio, will need your black magic to win this dungeon. The boy's voice was loud and Delta winced. He seemed unable to tone his back, then the eardrum bursting. The boy was left sniffed in annoyance. And me? I don't even like you. He snapped and Dio just smiled and the kid looked ready to write bad poetry. Friend Amonster, I need your white magic to heal me. Dio spoke and the boy grimaced. I'm actually a first level necro, the began, but Dio just laughed. Life magic works both ways. I, Dio, will be your warrior, he promised, and the girl Poppy sighed. Yay, she muttered and held some necklace in her hands with an odd symbol on it. The other boy sniffed again. Are you going to remind him that you are not a black mage, but just have a bad reaction to sunlight? He demanded, and the girl sighed. Nah, I can cast some magic. Mostly blue and purple. She sounded so done with this already. Delta was stunned. She couldn't tear her eyes away from the group. The redhead boy Dio held up a broken brittle blade into the sky and it went ting. A chip fell off the tip of the blade and hit the ceiling and Dio looked like he didn't even notice. Delta would only stare at her first actual adventures. This was bound to be interesting and really, really embarrassing. End of chapter. That, my friends, concludes this episode. I hope that you enjoyed. If you wish to support the author of the story, there will be a link to below. If you wish to support this channel, there are multiple ways to do so, which will all also be linked below. But the easiest way would be to subscribe and share my videos as much as possible. And until next time, I hope you all have a good one. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.